Hi there, and welcome to another episode of the Heart to Beat podcast. I'm your host, Felicia Prasad. And today, I am so honored to be speaking with two Caribbean immigrant entrepreneurs who have moved from the Caribbean, not to North America, but to the Nordic country of Sweden. And we're talking to Kenneth and David, who own Island Hopper's Restaurant in Stockholm. This is going to be a great conversation. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Hard to Beat podcast. And like I said, we're so excited today to be joined by Kenneth and David. They are Caribbean immigrant entrepreneurs all the way in Stockholm, Sweden. So Kenneth and David, welcome back to the Hard to Beat podcast. And we're so excited to have you today. I just wanted to kind of start out uh, with Kenneth first. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got all the way from Trinidad to Stockholm. Well, my journey actually carried me to London first before I uh, ended up in Stockholm, Sweden. So uh, I moved from Trinidad in 2005, spent roughly about seven years in London. So there I was actually working in restaurants apart, uh, as well as doing other jobs, trying to find my way. And uh, eventually, you know, cooking was my dream and my passion, of which I... Uh, moved to Stockholm later on and uh, that's what I've been doing ever since. Okay so when did you move uh, from Trinidad to London? I moved um, I moved in 2005 I I moved I was living in South London in uh, Nunhead place called Nunhead so in the southern part of uh, London and uh, it was really uh, the hard one of the heartbeats of the African Caribbean community in London. So there you get a really mix of cultures and uh, influences, which was a real melting pot for me because, uh, you know, you have certain images of London and what you expect it is. It's not actually, <laughs> it's only a small part of London looks like that. So you know, in the end, where it was such an eye-opening experience to be thrown into the African community and the Caribbean community and the flavors and the food and the cultures and the whole Caribbean as well. So it was it was quite good, and uh, it was really eye opening for me to get involved and get my feet wet in the industry and and learn and grow. And what about where were you born in Trinidad? I was in born in San Fernando originally. That's my uh, that's where my hoods are. So I was uh, in I born and grow in San Fernando from the, the formative parts of my life. So until I was like five, and then I moved to Coover. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, I grew up in central Coover from January, where we moved, we built our home there and we lived there until I was like 17 years old. Okay, super. And David, what about you? Uh, where were you born in Tobago? Oh, well, I was born in Scarborough. Okay. Uh, my mom is from Tobago. My dad is from Sandy Grande in Trinidad. So mixed of both cultures, you know, back and forth between Trinidad, the two islands. So I guess that's where my taste buds started to tingle more because, you know, we, we, we experience a lot because, uh, you know, in Trinidad, it's more of an Indian uh, culture as well. So the mixture of everything was just there for me naturally. And then, of course, well, I moved here to Sweden in uh, 2009. Okay, that's so you moved directly from Trinidad to Sweden. Yeah, yeah, because okay. my, my wife is Swedish. We met in today, oh, we got married okay. here and everything. And we came here to have our firstborn. And okay. uh, we've well, been here ever since. Now we have two, so we have to be here for a while longer. So that's where we, you know, basically I met Kenneth here. Okay. And we both decided to, to get into the, the restaurant business after Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Like, how did you guys meet? Did you know each other back home or did you just meet up in Sweden? <laughs> No, no. We no. bumped into each other. We bumped into <laughs> each other. We were working. Um, we were working at the now. It was called Gloomin back then, but it was now. It's called the Avicii Arena, in, uh, named okay. after the DJ in okay. Stockholm. So we were working there, and it was quite a lot of chefs at an event. And then you know you're working, and then you're like you're hearing like this is like this guy's from Trini as well. You're like yeah, we're like. Okay, and then you're like, you're, you're okay. We realize we're there amongst, this is like about 50 chefs in wow. one place working. Yeah. 
early in the mornings as oh well. It was like early days from like seven in the morning to eleven in the night. Wow. And, uh, we worked continuously like that for over three months. Oh, so it was um that is where we actually met. And from there on, we worked in a couple other places doing different types of food. Kept in touch and kept in touch. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing related to Caribbean food. We we're doing wow. everything else. So it wasn't like we we only did that when we started this restaurant. This is where we put our heads together and like, you know what, this is after we originally opened the restaurant, which wasn't originally Caribbean from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yes, I read that. So you guys started out doing pizzas. Yeah, pizzas and pizzas burgers. And burgers with a twist. With a twist. <laughs> it was uh it was the uh rebound from the corona. It was like the okay. thing that was selling here. Yeah. So you know, it was just like, okay, well, you know, if it's doing and it's working well, why can't we do? It? Exactly. So you know so, we So let's like, back up a little bit in terms of so you guys came together, you got to know each other. You say, look, let's come together and do our own thing. How did that idea evolve and how did you get from that idea to the actual business opening? So so walk us through a little bit about that. Um, I think it was at, as a result of Corona. Mm-hmm. When Corona came and uh, it was at a point at a junction, like where you worked after that period where you could not work and then you start working, you know, I, I remember working for an entire year with minimal stop. I was a head chef mm-hmm. at another restaurant. I was exhausted and I was just like, is this worth it? Is this the future? You know, is that point in time where you think like, I'm, what am I going to do? And, you know, we had that same premonition where we thinking like, okay, this is, this might be a good time, but what? Exactly. As all this, but what? What and, do and we, we do? didn't know exactly how long Corona would be around for. So right. that, that's what the, that was the next step. We said, you know what? Just let's try something on our own. Test the market. But then so you know, how did, the, how did that idea? Did you guys get together over a couple of beers? How how did that? How did you flesh out your idea? Yeah, we 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 were we actually you're actually right. We were meeting weekly at my apartment. Okay. And just brainstorming ideas. Uh, what would we do? A couple of friends were there as well, and we were like, "What would we do if we did playing cards?" You know, you know, after years of being abroad, you start back playing Romy and all fours, and you know, having a good time. This brainstorming, and then you know, it okay. Well, let's just look into it, and you look into it, and you realize, okay, prices has dropped on restaurants, and then okay, we could do this, and we could do that. Mm. How long would it take? And then you know, it's at that point when you realize you can do something, but you just need to pull the trigger, go ahead with it. So we took the leap. Wow. And that was, we decided in January 2021 mm-hmm. to do that. And by April, the end of April, 28th of April 2021, we bought all of the location we had. And that's, and then, okay, it's real now. Then we have to start like making everything, you know, it's like, is only so much help you could have, but then you have to do a lot on your own. It's a lot of risk involved. And we played it safe, you know, because we were just doing burgers and pizzas as everyone knew. knew. It was nothing to do with Caribbean food. Mm-hmm. But that switch came a little bit further down the line after a few months. And mind you, the burgers and the pizzas, we had a, a twist it because we used uh, like names from the, from the Caribbean, like for instance, Smokey Bunty. Yeah. Okay. Then we, we affiliated the names and then maybe they said, you know what, why not just go all out Caribbean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's where it went. So how did you get your funding to start? Because that is like always an issue for, for entrepreneurs when they when they, they have the idea, but then they don't have the funding. Did you guys pull your own money? How did that come about? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we had our own savings and then we had to take an extra loan. You know? Okay. So, that's because where it went. you yeah. don't really get small business loans and stuff like that. You know, you have yeah. to we had to pool everything we had together, and uh, even if it was it was the right timing with Corona, whereby a lot of businesses was going out, yeah. and the prices of everything dropped, and we got like assistance as well from people who uh, suppliers to help us out with in terms of equipment. Uh, we were able to make a very, very soft start. We didn't like, we didn't make that big splash, but we were able to do that. And we were the only workers in the beginning. So everything was on us. Mm. So that worked well. 
and it worked well for a few months. You know, we were started, we're open, and then we had to, we, you know, you get to that point where you're running out of money, so you need to open, and then, uh, then everything else had to flow because we didn't get the liquor license at the same time we're open. Wow. That came on like five months later, so that was we had to go through the summer without that. So that was a bit of a struggle, but in the end, it worked out. Uh, we got the liquor license, the business turned over, and then um, it ended up turning. Uh, it was just after the summer. No, it, it was we opening in the nineteenth of June, and from the first of September, we started. We changed completely to a Caribbean concept and a name because the okay. name was Bulgaria in the beginning, and then we changed to Island Hoppers. And, and that what was day a big did you change. actually? What day did you actually open? Was this in twenty twenty? It was Bulgaria. In 2020. Was, yeah. Burgers and pizza. Okay. Burgers and pizza. Bulgaria. And so you're doing just takeouts? Or are you doing people coming in in, in that no, time? Coming, you just, you know, people coming take in. Takeouts, they got Fedora, Volt, Uber, uh, you know, people okay. were coming in and eat as well. We did dine in. However, to, to take this to the next level, it needed the Caribbean concept because it was good. The product was good. But it just wasn't unique. It just, uh, no matter how much you made it to twist and you were doing a really good thing, why would someone come from an hour away to eat here? But given cultural background, given knowledge, given experience, uh, experience given the quality of the products we use, when we did the Caribbean concept, that cemented everything. And it did, we didn't, we didn't even know it had a niche market that was so big for it so it's in the end it's end up we end up having people who were second and third generation caribbean people who were coming to the restaurant never ate caribbean food in their life because <laughs> their grandfather was from trinidad or somewhere wow. and decided to come to us so it and it, it we had whole families eating so it was a lot of like dining and explaining and Okay, this is this, this is bandania, this is crab, this is dumpling. <laughs> but people didn't really understand anything. So it was an it was really good for the culture and the, the curry come as a whole. Yeah, good exposure. Good exposure. Wow. That is amazing. But talk a little bit about because I know a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with, you know, sort of the fear and the doubt. And and and, and you know, obviously you talked a little bit about the, the burnout and and the and the work that has to go into it. Talk a little bit about your personal, you know, the sort of as you started out on your own. Here you are coming from an employee. Now you have to make your own money to pay your bills. How did that transition, you know, go, especially in your mind? Talk about that little emotional journey, because I think that's what a lot of people, people think, okay, now Kenneth and, and David has this restaurant. Oh, this is great. This is like they're doing well. They, they don't understand the journey that you guys went through. Mentally, put it this way, everything. Yeah, put it this way. We worked from the day we opened, the 19th of June, 2021. Mm -hmm. We worked every day, every day until the 1st of November, 2022. We worked every single day. Mm -hmm. Every day. So every single day of the week. Every day we work, no times off, nothing. We work those times, unless we were closed for a national holiday or something. We were open all the time. So the level of commitment is, is unimaginable, given that you're not prepared for it. You have to be prepared if you're ready to make that leap. So um, that was just at a base level, what you have to do. But then you know it, it's it's also a strain on everything else. You have kids, you have uh, relationships, you have relationships. You are put a it's strain financially, financially everything, and as well as uh, as give emotionally because you know you're trying to put cover everything with all your hands, and it's hard. You simply can't do it. And again, you know, you live and breathe work. You talk about work. You are at work. If it's not work, is this? You know, so that's that end up becoming the topic of conversation. It takes over everything. Um, for us, it has been ups and downs because we've had to live with the good and the bad. Not every day is a winning day. And sometimes you're like, you start off the day and you're like, did we really do the right thing? And then it, it didn't end great the day. And you're like, and the next day it didn't end great. 
But then another day comes and like, wow, we made back everything for the last few days. So sometimes you're like, you you actually are ready to give up, but then you still keep going. That fire keeps burning. And that's why you have to dig deeper and say, you know what? I'm, you made this commitment and, you know, you put everything into it. Why just drop it just like that? You know, just, you just have to fight it a little bit more. And then when you get to that point, when you do take on our staff as well, you know, there's their lives you have to take in consideration as yeah. well because, you know, they are depending on you for their employment. So you have to strategize your entire year as how you're going to do everything, uh, even training. It, it's a massive commitment. It's not because on a whole, with a, opening a burger and pizza restaurant was easier given that you don't have a title on it, saying that it's this kind of this or that kind of that. But when you're representing your country or your region, you put tremendous emphasis on it because you want it to be good. You don't want it to be bad. You don't. You want people to come and say, okay, it was better than what I had when I was there, which brings you struggle even harder to try and compete with what you have home. You don't have the same ingredients. You don't yeah. have everything. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a hustle weekly just to keep up with suppliers, produce, keep up with the level that we've had can continue to hold it to that high level consistently throughout the seasons because it's quite different here given yeah. uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Yeah. So how people get some are, of those ingredients, it's really it's tough. It's really you know? tough. And wow. coming so from how do you guys get world. that? Because that's a, that's a very interesting uh, subject that you hit on. How do you get your ingredients now? Yeah. Some of the ingredients, like, like say um, the herbs, you know, I might grow some of it at home. Oh. Yeah, so then we make our own uh, green seasonings. Wow. We make it from scratch, you know, and that's the best way to keep it as authentic as possible. And also, and then we, we physically have to go and source some of the ingredients, you know, go, go to like the Asian supermarkets where they import it. Okay. Okay. You know, that's what it's like in New York and stuff where you go to yeah, the yeah. Uh, on those places. So it's really tough. You have to physically go and find it. It's, it's, it's been tough because uh, given where we are as well, it's like it's at the moment there's a massive Arabic community in Stockholm, which they use quite similar produce the Caribbean, a lot of seasonings they use okay. um, it's not the same type but it is the same thing base, yeah. same base so it's like that has helped because we've able to go in their market areas and source good produce but you know getting for example like oxtails getting like goat that has been like a tremendous struggle because the sheer volume that we wanted we couldn't get that. People weren't buying that. You know, they will bring in like 50 pounds a week. And we were like, go to 50 pounds in like four <laughs> days. It's just like, so that's not enough. For us. So then we had to like, you know, in tell them to increase the volume. And we will, we will put uh, yeah, down. we will, even though we had no idea how much we're going to sell, you know, we were kind of bluffing, but it's still, you know, we were able to, <laughs> we were able to go from strength to strength to a point now where we could get it. You know, it's like upstairs were like huge sizes because people, they're yeah, how European-wise ate upstairs. They cooked it and just peeled off the meat where we wanted it cooked yeah. on the bone. So it was in huge sizes, which we had to get them to cut it smaller, which is uh, bite sizes. Uh -huh. So it would be a lot easier for someone to hold. So it, all these little challenges uh, kind of like uh, stepped in the way. Um, Finding a proper curry for us to use was a, a real challenge as well because we can't use our chief brand from home or chatak, which you're accustomed to using. You had to find a curry and use it. That was really challenging for me mm -hmm. to try and manipulate it's something, yeah. manipulate uh, and make our own so that we could have our own yeah. brand sort of, but use our own base that we could use in the restaurant. That will be your own. So it's because it's coming from all over the world and mix all the time and not consistent. So it needs yeah. to be driving us crazy. Wow. So these are the sort of challenges that we had to deal with. And um, you know, at home, you 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 get consistent products from your own country, given that it's very basic things that you use. Here they are coming from everywhere. You know, it's India, Pakistan, Spain, Africa. So it's like completely different things that you have to kind of like monitor the quality for and like, okay, this will cook faster than this, you know, just basic. So these challenges we were not originally prepared for because you just say, okay, we're just going to cook this. It doesn't work like that. You just have to like, we had to find our way, which took a few months, but then we, we landed. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So talk about the restaurant now. Like, how is it going? What are what's on the menu? Oh, well, we have a variety of Caribbean dishes. You know, mostly from uh from Trinidad and Tobago and a bit the Jamaican. You know, we have like the jerk chicken mm -hmm. wings. Okay. It's fried. That's a favorite starter here. They, they rush that down. Then we have um you know beef pies mm -hmm. and chicken pies. Uh, that starters, and then uh, coming down the line with the Caribbean food, we have the curry crab and dumpling from Tobago, and we have the curry goat, curry lamb, curry stewed chicken, uh, Jamaican rice and peas with oxtail. It's, uh, we 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 wanted to stick to the authentic standout dishes. Mm -hmm rather than go too wild or too broad because we have a really small originally the place was intended to be a pizza restaurant okay, so this is a, when you change the concept you bought it for that purpose and you change the concept you're still left with this very limited space mm -hmm. so you have to actually work pretty smart with what you have so in the end we're like you know if we're going to do this we can't do everything Hello, pie, sahina. we can't do we can't do it it's not possible to yeah. do it given as well that a lot of things that worked generally in one country would not work in another country. So we intended to stick to the items that would stick out, you know, like oxtail, goat, lamb, um, crab, you know, these the authentic dishes that, you know, you go to the Caribbean and you want to get. However, there are some hindrances we have. For example, a product like plantain. We would love to have it on the menu, but it's an inconsistent product for this part of the world. Oh, wow. It's green, it's ripe, it's... Yeah. Half ripe, it's like so. Av we, avocados, same avocados, it seems so. It's like we don't have those stuff on the menu because we cannot deliver a quality product continuously all year round to the customer. Mm -hmm. So we're like, we don't, unless it's a catering, yes. Other than that, it's like it's really tough to have that continuously. Um, so we've had to kind of do a few tweakings to the products that we know will stick out and uh, make it our own until we have like a bigger space to work with. Okay. And so what's your day? What's what's your opening like? What how many days a week are you now? Every day. Every day. Every day. Oh wow. Every day. Unless it's a public holiday yeah. that, that people definitely don't come out for. And what times are you open? From uh well, Monday to Friday, eleven until uh Monday to Thursday, basically until nine and then Friday until ten PM. And then Saturday until 10 p.m. as well, from 12 to 10. Sundays uh, from 12 to 8 p.m. But that's our winter hours. In okay. the summertime, we open an, an hour or two later. Okay, okay. And how, 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 many people you know, can you, a... how many people can you actually have at once, like in the restaurant? Inside at the inside, moment, it's 32. 32, 32, yeah. 32. 32 inside and uh, another 20, 28 outside. Okay. 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 So that the outside opens in the summer, or it's it's all yeah. year in the summer. summer. Okay. So do you also have like Caribbean um events, music, that kind of vibe uh, happening? Yeah. Yes. We, we we occasionally have a DJ on the on the on the, on the Saturdays. Okay. You know, with uh, playing a variety of Caribbean and Afro beats. You mm. know. That that uh, does a little bit of promotion for us as well, you know, and get and to also to get some of the Caribbean people to come out. Okay, and in terms of like your your actual customer base now, are you getting more people from outside the Caribbean, or you know, people who have never been there? Is that sort mm -hmm. of a mixture? I think it's mixed, but I think largely eighty percent of our customers are not from the Caribbean. Mm. Generally speaking, yeah. So we have a few Caribbean customers, but we have more customers who are not from Sweden. Yeah, we have yeah. people who want to experiment, yeah, try the food, you know, yeah. because they hear so much about the uh, about the Caribbean food and the flavors and stuff like that. So we went from a we went from a time where we used to have to explain. You go to the table, take an order, and you spend twenty minutes talking to four people, going through everything. What is this? What is that? What is this? What is that? That point now you see those same people come in and are like, I want this, I want that, I want that. You know, it was it was a challenge and a risk to serve meat on the bone. It's not generally served there. Everybody loves their duck breast, so everybody loves their chicken breast or the beef it all. You know, we serving everything classically on the bone, which was a challenge because you get that feedback. Okay, well, what 
people who just don't know what to do with it. They don't want to. They don't want to touch it. They don't want to hold it. The knife and fork just doesn't really work sometimes in those little corners of the oxtail. You gotta hold it, or you go to the. Or yeah. the lamb. You had to explain to them how to, to eat explain crab, to them how to eat it. You know how to eat oh, the yeah, crab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you it, know, it's it was like it was, it was it was challenging and funny in the beginning. You know, you'd see a lot of people who like eat crab, for example, and you know, every time they eat, they will take like a napkin. So in the end, you see one person use like you like like thing. all this <laughs> napkin, and they don't, they just don't know how to do with it, and you're like, okay, okay, you have to like get used to like holding it. It's fine. It's not gonna bite you. That sounds like pretty fun, but also a lot of exciting. I think you guys are doing amazing for the culture and, you know, the Caribbean region in that part of the world. Just absolutely amazing. How is it? How many Caribbean people do you think actually live in Stockholm? Do you have any idea? I, 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 think, I think on a whole, if Sweden has about nine or 10 million people now, I think the Caribbean population, which... So directly Caribbean or probably has to be about yeah, about 50,000. It can't be more yeah. than that. If it could be whole Caribbean on a yeah. whole, it can't be more than that. Yeah, because there's Jamaica, Dominican yeah, Republic. It's, it's, a, it's a big mix it's of Caribbean, mix. Caribbean culture here. That's it's surprising. a big mix of Caribbean. It's so 50,000, you know, it's, it's, it's quite small compared to England or Germany yeah. or Holland. Uh -huh. Of course. Those countries are way, way more Caribbean influenced. But here, we have about 1,000 or so. Wow. Okay. If you take the whole Caribbean on, but it's all spread out, really. Not everybody lives in Stockholm. So you see everybody summertime. Oh, so, uh, okay. Okay. And what is it like in terms of like a black, uh, two black chefs in Stockholm with a Caribbean restaurant? How is that received in terms of like getting financing, getting funding? Is that something that's easy to have in, in that part of the world? Huh. Well, I would say it, it's 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 certainly an eyebrow raiser mm -hmm. to to stand out because there's not many of us around, and there are not many that uh, has a restaurant that has a profile like us. You, you know, you always generally find even a lot of black owned restaurants don't really have like an alcohol license. So it's very few of them that do have one. It's normally those places you go buy something and leave. This is a place you're, this is a dining experience, which is quite new. So it has shed a positive light on how we can uh, say how our business is perceived on a whole. How Caribbean food is perceived on a whole. It's not just something that you eat from a wrapper or eat out of a box. You could actually sit and dine and enjoy it. So uh, this this has been great in terms of like how has it been in terms of funding you know it's still everything in funding especially in Stockholm is requires history and business history the longer we're open the easier it is to to I, I we all our suppliers have been and all our partners that we worked with has been actually quite helpful to us wow. um, in terms of we're at just at the beginning point of where we're looking into funding going forward. Because given that we've had a couple of years history on our base and how we're doing, and uh, you can see our books, see how everything is going there at that point. So everything is it's looking good. It's not like it's all rosy and all roses. It still has its ups and downs, but uh, it has been positive. We've had, had positive feedback and responses from anyone who has come in and uh, all our suppliers and um, our econo economy guys. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's baby steps. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And what would your advice be to people, you know, young black men, especially who are looking to, you know, become an entrepreneur, maybe not in the restaurant business, but pretty much similarly follow uh, that path. Well, first I would say do your research. And and have a proper plan, you know, to, to, to move forward with that. You know, get get yourself, you know, out there and make sure you, you know what you're getting into. I'd say hard work and dedication. I think it's just like and it's not always where you start but where you end up because you know, we we've had many people who said no, don't do that or why are you doing that? And 
as you say, it's better to try and fail and never to have tried at all. But, you know, you want, if it requires dedication and heart. If you, you do your research and if this is what you want to do, how are you going to do it? You long-term project as well, because it's not like you're going to be given anything for free. So you have to find, you have to really take this risk and say, okay, I'm going and speaking from like a food perspective. Uh, if you're going into a niche market, what are my pros and my cons into doing this? Not just wishful thinking that I'm going to do it. So I would say do your research, hard work and dedication, project plan, knowing that this is what I want to do now. This is where I'm going to be. And you just continue working to it. Stay within budget. Really important. Mm -hmm. Very important. Very important. Stay. It's one of the hardest things. Stay within budget. It is really, really hard, especially when you have families involved and children, siblings. Be stay within budget and stay focused. And what's next for Island Hoppers? What what will you guys plan to do next in terms of growth or, or any new thing that you're gonna add? At, at the moment, the we're at a point where expansion beyond this point where we are looking at it this way because the business itself uh, has outgrown the location that it's in so the next step is investing investing investment. and then uh looking beyond here because the market is not very much like because we don't you have to be in specific areas to stand out specific areas either where do we go with this are we going mainstream like straight from to the groceries with the product or we going to the food courts with it or we want to keep it as a restaurant where yeah. people come to our restaurant so there are many different avenues but it's i would say it's a bit difficult to see given that you're going to be presenting for investing that they will have a bigger say as well into what you're doing given that it's our brand the authenticity of it is ours but there are many avenues which we could go however once it doesn't dilute the brand or affect the quality of the product, we're quite refined and quite open minded for it. Absolutely. And so, if Caribbean people, especially you know, from the US, from anywhere in the world coming to Stockholm, where can they find Island Hoppers? Island Hoppers is in uh, Stockholm, in Hagestein. We're in uh, Instrument Vega, Instrument Vega 23 in uh, Ernst Bay. You could look us up. Find some of the best Caribbean food you've ever eaten in your sure. life. Yeah, and give us the website as well. Yes. yes. Island Hoppers. The, the, the website is there. Just Google us and we're right there. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, guys. An absolute pleasure. And, you know, congrats you. on your journey. You and us. lots of good luck. Hopefully when I come in July, I can uh, stop by and see you guys in person. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. It's been a pleasure. And that's all the time we have for this month's edition of the Hard to Beat podcast. Remember to subscribe and stay tuned to this podcast as usual. I'm Felicia Prasad, your host. Until next time, wishing you love, light, and abundance always.